Hey, Vlad here. Welcome to Catholic Friday's episode number 40. 40 episodes of this madness, joyful madness, holiday spirited madness. I have absolutely no idea why I'm going with this madness idea here. But once again, I'm joined by Mr. Richard Morgan. Richard Morgan, how likely it is that <laughs> you are at full strength today after a long live stream yesterday. Glad I have to admit it, it's unlikely. Because it's been a it's been a difficult week. I'm working my butt off in the run up to Christmas. But then everybody who works in this industry that I work in is doing the same because we want to sell as much gear as we can to people for the holiday season. That's what it's mm. all about. Yeah. But yeah, I was up quite late doing the Blue Guitar live stream. We had a special Q&A one with Thomas. We've done that three or four times where we, we don't have a special other theme about gear or whatever. It's just people can show up and ask whatever they want to ask. And it's always fun. It's really, it's really nice, but mm. lots of people have lots of questions. So it's like, okay, we've been shooting this for two and a bit hours and it might be time to go home and go to bed. But yeah, yeah. It's all I good fun. You. How are you, Vlad? Because last week you were not at 100% either, were you? No, I wasn't. And I'm doing better, thank you. Not at 100% just yet, but getting there at least. This flu has been a sticky one. I haven't had this type of flu in a few years. I think, though, I might be forgetting. But getting better, and that's good because next week there's several uh, actually music-related kind of major things happening that I need to be at 100% because I'm helping out my sister with her, like she's graduating graduating from like music theater and she has her, what's the word? I don't know, recital or something like that, like final concert that she has like arranged and everything. And I'm going to do the front of house stuff there and possibly cool. live streaming. We'll, we shall see. So I'm helping with, so with that, and we actually have a uh, like private gig later next week as well. Just three songs, but got to rehearse those. Oh, and I have have a guitar over there that I need to unbox and a bunch of stuff like that. So yeah, it's nice to be he healthy and not have any flus and anything like that. So I can do the things that I like and also have energy left for my family at the end of the day. So. Yeah, uh, you mentioned Christmas presents. Right away, we got to jump over here as long as I remember, click the buttons. So last week, the perfect we present. launched the... Yes, these are perfect Christmas presents for you and the whole family. Uh, because We launched the Unlikely merch line and just want to point out that, yes, we have merch. And that's a fantastic way to support what we do and also get yourself something nice for the holidays and something warm for the holidays as well because there's coffee mugs and there's hoodies. I'm actually wearing a hoodie and these are very good quality. Uh, I received my t-shirt yesterday and that was uh, actually like the quality seems to have gone up since the last time I got some myself like samples of the stuff I'm selling on the Catpick Studio store. So... And you, I think you can confirm that this stuff is actually high quality. You got, you have, you have the shirt already, right? Yeah, I can. I made a basic error because I wore my T-shirt the other day, which was just a normal day where I didn't happen to be on the live stream. So I've worn the shirt. <laughs> I can confirm that. Yeah, I, I've had stuff from Teespring for quite a few years now, and I, I did it with my previous job with the Hughes and Kettner store, and I can confirm that. At least in my experience, they've been making better and better stuff. Of course, you, you can buy different quality levels within Teespring. You know, you can choose different types of cotton or whatever. You can choose, is it classic or premium or whatever it is. But yeah. the, the shirt which I've had, the Unlikely shirt, is very, very nice. It feels good. It's comfy, size large, fits me like a, I would say like a glove, but it doesn't fit me like a glove because I had it on my torso as opposed to my hand. But it fits really well. It, it's really nice. So I, I like it a lot. I'm very happy with it. Yeah, and I also want to point out that everything that we sell in this store is like, we've tested all of the products ourselves. I have like each of these items and Rich has some and a few of my friends have some as well. So like 
Any, every, anything you buy from the store is like tested by us before we put it on sale. And uh, last week we talked about like I was trying to figure out how to like there's all, also snapbacks available. And I should get my sample soon, but it's still in the mail right now. And especially with Christmas rolling in, like everything slows down in mail right now. In yeah. Finland at least. Uh, for whatever reason, in the EU store, you cannot see the snapback. But if you go to the Catpix Studios merch site, at the bottom of the page, there's a shipping region ticket that you can click. And you can click it like this. We're showing this on YouTube. And... If you select a different fulfillment region and sw switch to USA, kaboom, the snap act back is there. And I cannot wait to get mine because this looks good. And it's not that expensive either. Well, tw 20 U 3 euros, 24 euros, but still. And a uh, great way to support channel and... It is unlikely that you will won't be noticed wearing this snapback. <laughs> Do you know if it's like shipped from the USA to Europe? If you'll have Apparently, to pay extra yes. customs or anything when it arrives? Um, depend. I guess it depends on the price. Uh, at least Finland used to have like there was like a fifty euro threshold. And if your order is more expensive than that, that then you don't have to pay the customs. Or you might have to pay the customs, which is like a few percentage percent of the price. But I think you need to pay VAT or anything like that unless it's over 50 euros. I'm not 100% sure. That might depend on the country as well. But yeah, if you want to, snap, to get the snapback, uh, use the US version of the store. But if you otherwise you're in EU... Just use this one, and you won't have to worry about any taxes or import things or anything like that. The funny thing is, like, I just switched to the EU store, and now I can now I can see the snapback, and I can apparently add it to my. <laughs> this is very confusing. That is strange. Yeah. So yeah, the cheat code or something like that is that you <laughs> go to the US store open the snapback and then you can switch back to the EU store and you can order the snapback. So there you go. <laughs> We've hacked the system. So strange, but like I got confirmation from Teespring that yes, it indeed will be shipped from US, but you can order it to EU as well. No problem. So that's good. And yeah, that's our merch update. And before I forget Thank you so much for watching, listening, liking, sharing, subscribing. Uh, this show is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Podbean app as well. And we kind of alluded to that already, but the great way to support what we do is to get merch. There's a songwriting course. There's a bunch of other stuff going on as well. And you can find everything in the show notes. And there's a special discounts and things like that. There's a special discount to the unlikely merch as well, by the way. Minus 20% off of Anything from the store, there's a code for that as well. Use it upon checkout to get something there. And in today's show, a packed one, I might add. Uh, it's the holy grail time of lists. We have three lists, but before that we go to uh, Wampler, Pathion, Deluxe. And then there's a Harley Benton DNA FX GIT Pro. Very smoothly rolling name for a product. We're going to check that out. Talk about the new Tim Pedal by Paul Cochrane. And then we have not one, not two, but three lists. Because three is better than one or two lists. And we're going to dive <laughs> into Music Radar's best, 10 best new guitar amp and modeling pedal lists. Uh, the 10 best new effects 2021 list. And then the something I'm forgetting what's the French expression like something creme creme something something yeah basically the you mean the creme gem. de la creme yes exactly thank you <laughs> I haven't finished my coffee yet and you can tell uh, <laughs> yeah best premium electric guitars 2021 list by guitar.com it's going to going to be a killer. Uh, in Albums of Our Lives, I'm going to <clears throat> talk about an album that 
like was one of the albums of my uh, late teens, early adulthood years. And yeah, in the weekend I watch some bass riffs by ABBA. So that should be fun. And yeah, sorry for the long intro. Let's dive into things that have happened not so long ago. Are gone. Okay, let me take a sip of coffee and then we'll continue. From the unlikely mug, by the way. Which makes all coffees taste better. Exactly. At least 10% uh, taste increase, guaranteed. Some sort of disclaimer text here, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, recent happenings. Yep, as we mentioned, Wample unveils the Pathion Deluxe Dual Overdrive, doubling the drive circuits for 200 combinations of gain settings. And if you're not familiar with Pathion Deluxe, oh, like Pathion Overdrive, that's basically the king of tone as well, right? Yeah, the Pantheon is like a Wampler's take on the Blues Breaker pedal. Mm. And yeah, the King of Tone is also based on the Blues Breaker, which is the Marshall Blues Breaker circuit. So yeah, the Pantheon came out a year or two ago, maybe. I have a Pantheon and I made a video about it oh. a year ago or something or a few months ago. And I love it. It's an amazing pedal. I'm a huge fan of transparent overdrives. That uh, beautiful overused cliche, but I love it. It's it's just something that works for my style of playing, I think. And traditionally, the Blues Breaker is also a bit more kind of low gain. You know, it's mm. not your Rev G3 sort of overdrive or distortion pedal. And there are many famous Blues Breaker pedals, but the Pantheon is one of the best alongside the, the King of Tone, the original Blues Breaker, and the other kind of very famous modern day one is the JHS Morning Glory pedal. And what's better than having one Pantheon pedal than having two with 200 different gain choices, or whatever that headline said. Yay. How does it have 200? Uh, I guess they did some sort of math with all the combinations, but I am not sure. <laughs> like, so, looking at the panel... I, I know it's got, it's got MIDI capability, so I, I'm sure it's got ah, the option to have 128 presets saved, but I don't know where 200 comes from. Maybe it's a combination of all the different switches because you can see you see those uh, white lines on the left and right of the pedal there. Those yeah. actually allude to little mini switches on the side. Ah, uh, of course. Which you can use to change the clipping style and stuff like that. The, um, the King of Tone is also famous for that. If you open up the King of Tone pedal, there are four dip switches inside that change the way it clips, etc., etc. And people like to mess around with those. And people like... Brian Wampler have put them on the outside of the pedal. I'm just going to fetch my original mm. Pantheon. It's behind me on Please that. Do. That, oh, that's hard to do. That shelf there. <laughs> yeah, me, uh, while we wait for it to get the pedal, like, uh, <clears throat> this Did you see already, that? like, yeah, it gives it me the option paralysis. It was the pedal paralysis. closest to me. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so Can it was use... obviously there for regular usage. It's here. Um, yeah. So you can see that it, it looks a tiny bit different to the deluxe one. The mini switches here are actually similar to what the mini switches on the side of the deluxe are. Mm. So uh, yeah, I love this overdrive pedal. It has three different gain settings. It has three different overdrive voices. And yeah, I guess in combination with all those pedals, you probably have a bunch of different tones. If you times that by two and add the MIDI capabilities with the deluxe version, you get many, many different sounds. The cool thing about the Pantheon for me is that it's supremely versatile because you have those different overdrive voicings. And, you know, Wampler pedals kind of do this thing where they sort of sound a bit more kind of clean and hi-fi compared to some other pedals. Maybe that's just me, but I think a few other people must have noticed it. Mm. And that just seems to work for me. So, yeah, the original was a great pedal, and I would love, oops, as I throw it onto my desk, I would love to try <laughs> the new one. There aren't many videos I mean, out looks... yet. Our good friend Eric has done one, but yeah, he's just made me want it more. More. <laughs> more. 
Yeah. I mean, you Have definitely you ever... need the 200 combinations, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I love this pedal, mm. but the one thing that's missing is about 180 extra combinations of gain. <laughs> so... Yeah. Uh, I wonder if it, it works in a way where you can kind of... Well, I mean, there have been pedals where... Like, I, I've missed the option to, like, switch between two combinations of sounds, so... yes. It does. Do I guess that. this makes and sense. It also has <laughs> the um, the mini TRS jacks, which means that if you use it in combination with a loop switcher, it's just one ah. pedal, but you can actually activate and deactivate both sides as well. So that gives it. I guess that's part of the two hundred combinations. It's extra extra choices there. It's certainly option paralysis as far as an overdrive pedal goes. But knowing how good the Pantheon sounds, I really want to try this one. I can also tell yeah, you, having yeah. researched it a little bit, that just looking at the pedal as we can see it there, the left-hand side is more like the original Pantheon, which Brian Wampler refers to as being like a, a boutique version of the, the Bluesbreaker circuit, and the side on the right is more like a sort of lower gain, more traditional take on the circuit. Each of the sides has the four knobs, and in the center of the pedal is the presence control there, which controls the presence on both sides of the pedal simultaneously. Yeah, I mean, it look, looks great. I bet you can get, well, apparently you can get <laughs> quite a lot of different sounds from it. Uh, it's debatable whether <clears throat> your average audience can tell that whether you have uh, five or 200 different combinations of gain settings on your pedal. But if it inspires you to play, why not? Uh, yeah, for me, this is a bit of an option paralysis. But then again, if I would get like two good sounds and I can like access both of them via foot switch. Yeah, why not? I'm also like a big fan of Wampler pedals. I need to get the Mini Ego compressor just because it's the best damn compressor pedal I've had. It was stupidly simple and I loved it and I need to get one on my board again, please. Yep, get one. You should never have sold it. Why did you sell it? Please don't ask. I don't remember. It, it, okay. That pedal is like uh, about 50 pedals ago, so I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember that far in the to the past, so unfortunately, I cannot sell. I'm, I'm sure there was a great reason. I, and it definitely wasn't like, I just want to have new pedals. <laughs> oh, absolutely so, not. I'm sure it wasn't yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah, there's a bunch, as Rich mentioned, there's a few videos out already. If you want to check out the sounds, you can find them on YouTube. For example, by Living Room Gear Demos. Our good friend, Eric. All right. Jumping to the next one. <laughs> this is a mouthful. Harlebenton just stepped up its multi-FX game significantly with the DNA FX Git Pro modeling unit. Um, that's a bunch of words and letters to name the product. But basically, it's a multi-FX unit that you can see here on YouTube. And I think it looks nice. Very simple. There's like a foot pedal on the right side and four foot switches. Output control on the left. And I I don't think that's a touch screen, but nice looking screen as well. There's a built-in looper, a tuner, stuff like that. Anything you can put from a model nowadays, I think. Yeah, five inch colored screen, so it's not, not a touch screen. And That's still cool, though. It looks like a very yeah. bright and easy to see screen. And yeah, yeah five definitely. inch screen, that's that's quite large for a screen on a modeler. Yeah. But the, the whole unit looks quite big. If you look at that picture up at the top, it's almost a minimalist design because there's quite a lot of mm. unused space. I can imagine a few other companies who would have squeezed that much, you know, those number of controls into a, a much smaller enclosure. But I actually like a bit of room. I, I like the clean design. I think it looks really nice. Yeah, same. Are looks you like familiar, Vlad, with these? 
Have you played the original version of this pedal? What, what's the quality like? Does it measure up to line six? Does it measure up to the head rush? Who are they competing with with this product? <clears throat> well, first of all, I want to check the price or whatever it is. I'm getting that in pounds. Uh, let me switch to euros. Uh, 292 euros. Uh, it's still cheaper than the Helix Stomp, I think. I think this is in the price range of like Moors and such. I think. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, <clears throat> it looks nice. There's a nice amount of different I.O. Uh, <clears throat> I think this is probably like a, a tier below like Helix Tombs and a head rush. Like last week we talked about the head rush. Or like mentioned that head rush. And then there was the whole tone, hot one. Ampiro as well. And or was it so what's in ago? this unit? It was with Mike that we talked about that. Yeah. So two weeks ago. Yeah, what's two in this ago. one? So you've got amplifier modeling, multi-effects as well, right? I think so. <clears throat> yeah, IR speaker simulations. Pieces. Yeah. So it's basically, so basically it's, like, it's got everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can sw use it for channel switching on your amp. There's like an amp uh, switch uh, output. So if your amp has like, is that like a latch type of switching thing? If your amp has like a standard like plug in foot switch, you can trigger those with this unit as well. You can use it as a recording interface as well. There's a two XLR out, uh, balanced outputs, and a couple of unbalanced outputs. There's a MIDI in and out. What else? Uh, stereo effects loop. Uh, there's an aux mini jack input as well. Oh, sorry, outputs of head headphones. Oh, there's both headphone output and an aux input as well. And it has an expression pedal, but you can also connect the second expression pedal to it as well. So a lot of control options. Nice. I mean... I'm guessing this is this is probably not the at the top of the modeling like quality wise, but all of the modeling units nowadays are at least like good, like very decent. Especially if, like since you can add like your own IRs into this as well, uh, it will probably sound just fine or maybe even really good. And yeah, there's a list of. All kind of like basic effects. Compressors, EQ, auto wall, harmonizer, overdrive, distortion, chorus, flanger, phaser, rotary speaker, tremolo, reverb with different modes, room plate, spring hall, church, etc. Even Thorman doesn't bother to list all of the reverbs, <laughs> all the delays that are in the unit. They're just a ping pong, like for delays, ping pong, ducking, reverse tape, modulation, etc. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, basically, pretty much all you might want in this type of unit. It doesn't have a drum computer according to the home website, but that's that's the one thing I wanted. Does it have yes. a looper, by the way? I think for jamming it had with one, yourself. There was like I even a looper foot switch that. on the unit itself. Yeah, hold for looper. Yeah. Nice. So it's fully featured. That's a decent price point. I feel like it's maybe it's coming out just a little bit too late to be a sort of a yeah. Christmas present option because looking at the website, the Toman site that you're on there, it says available in one to two weeks and yeah. one to two weeks is possibly going to, you know, just be a bit too late for Father Christmas to deliver that to people. It could be. Yeah. Uh, I kind of want to try this out. Like I've mostly stayed away from all the multi-FX units, but kind of... W wouldn't be a bad thing to try some of this out just to find out what the mo like how is the state of amp modeling in 2021 with these kind of more budget friendly units uh, definitely between this and the whole tone for example <clears throat> i'm not sure which one to go for this is probably a bit more i think this is cheaper Check the whole tone. Ampiro 1, but... Uh, Ampiro 1 is roughly the same price, but Ampiro 2 is four ninety nine, so it's actually... Quite a lot more expensive, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, at least and I think the Helix PSP. Stomp is also about 500. Yeah, isn't it? I think so. So the the, the Harley Benton one is considerably cheaper, as with the mm. guitars compared to the competition. But the question will be: Do the effects hold up? Yeah. Yeah, Hairdrush MX-5 is also for four fifty nine. So this is half the price for a lot of these. So, well, almost at least two ninety two. Interesting. I, I'm looking forward to seeing other people doing videos with this, and then I'll consider if it's something I need to take a look at as well. Mm. I, I've never really had a one of the modern multi-effects units. It's just something I've never done because I, I love pedals and I'm proper old school and I don't like to spend hours inside menus. But with these big yeah. touch screens, they're making it so much easier and so much more intuitive to program the sounds that you want that I'm getting closer to saying, okay, I need to actually try mm. something. And it, yeah. in my head, I'm leaning more towards something from line six, but I don't know why. That's just what my what, what my my psyche is telling me. Mm, based on my uh, like impressions of all, all the units, uh, Line Six does have the best effects. Like if we're talking about effects, all the delays, reverbs, and all the soundscapes you can create with those. I I feel like most of like modeling experts if you will, would say that Helix still has the best effects. But yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it looks nice. Maybe I need to work on something with Harley Benton to try one yeah. of these out. I just got a shipment from them yesterday, so maybe early next year. Then I just revealed what I'm going to be unboxing soon. <laughs> Is it a Gibson? It's a guitar. <laughs> the Harley Benton Gibson edition. What? <laughs> One of those. All right, moving on. Paul Cochrane teases a new Tim Overdrive. Uh, uh, with luck, I'm hoping it'll be ready by the end of winter. <laughs> uh, that's a great quote. That's, that's like a that's Game a of great Thrones quote. quote. Yeah. It's also like... Uh, with luck, I'm hoping it'll be ready. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Vex Builder has revealed that he tried to release the pedal back in 2016. What? You know, these things take their time. Apparently. And you know, yeah, he's been working on it for five years. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah. But this is version three of the Tim Overdrive, and the Tim Overdrive is the big brother to the the Timmy, which is the legendary single uh, transparent overdrive pedal by Paul Cochran. Um, yeah. And yeah, the Tim traditionally had a Timmy on one side and more of a boost side on the other, and this would be version three of that. And it's another one that I would love to play, but this will be presumably built by hand by Paul Cochran himself, like all the Timmys are, mm. and sold mostly in the USA in small numbers, similar to the King of Tone, actually, and it'll be quite hard for us in Europe to find one. So what we're going to have to do is go across to the NAMM show next year in June. Hopefully these will be available by then, and we can also order an unlikely snapback cap from the Teespring USA store and not have to pay customs or anything and come home with a shed load of amazing gear. But again, I, I love the Timmy pedal and if the Tim, which I've never tried, if the new version of the Tim is anything like the Timmy with an extra boost, then I'm all for trying that pedal. Uh, I love the Timmy. It's one of those always on sort of mm. subtle pedals that just makes everything you do sort of sound and feel better. It gives you extra dynamics. It just gives you a bit more kind of juiciness to the tone. And sometimes you don't even notice it's on, but then you turn it off and you're like, ah, so that's what it was doing. It's like magic yeah. fairy dust. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I have the Kalan Pure Sky, which is, I guess, a copy of the Timmy pedal. Yes. And it, it's just fantastic. <clears throat> but I think mine is dying because it's like, <clears throat> it, there's been a few times where it starts to cut out all of a sudden and the when the pedal like whether the pedal is on or off the light is blinking weirdly randomly I've unplugged it right now I'm looking at my pedal board but like <laughs> there's something going on with that pedal uh, kind of would love to get the real version 
Or oh, actually, maybe even this one, because this one you could apparently run with 18 volts, and I kind of like the extra headroom the 18 volts give, gives to yeah. overdrive pedals. Plus, it would be nice to support the original designer. Um, yeah, it always is. Good. I mean, I have my Timmy, yeah. which I absolutely love, but I had to buy it secondhand here in Germany, and I was on the yeah. hunt for one for quite a few years, actually. I would always look, every time I went to the NAM show, every time I went to California, and I've been to eight, nine, ten, however many, and I've always thought, I'll manage to find one at a store around there, but there's never anything, because they're so limited yeah. and they get snapped up so quickly. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of them get bought by people just to sell it for twice the price later. But I was lucky yeah. to find one in Germany that was at a, a decent price for what you pay over here, and I'm incredibly happy with mine. Yep. Yeah, um, uh, oh, they mentioned in the article that uh, he has partnered with MXR to launch the mini version of Timmy. So maybe Which I'll I also get have. That, that. Oh, have you compared Which is the great. two? Yes. Watch my channel, Vlad. <laughs> I need that sweet, I'm sweet ad revenue. <laughs> no, but I have. Yeah. I've done a video <clears throat> where I compare four Timmy esque pedals. Oh, the Timmy, I... the MXR Timmy, the Dan Electro, Transparent Overdrive, and what's the fourth one? Is it the Pure Sky? I, I think can't even the Pure remember. Sky as well. Yeah, I do have the Pure Sky, yeah. But it might have been a different pedal. I can't even remember. I'm just going to look at that right now. So, so you've just entered a phase in your life where you have like different iterations of basically the same pedal. <laughs> Pretty you much. You found your niche. Yeah, I have. Why not? What a sad little niche. But it, it's fun. Mm. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it was, yeah, the Pure Sky. So it's the, the Paul Cochran Timmy, the MXR Timmy, the K-Line Pure Sky, and the Dan Electro Cool Cat Transparent Overdrive. Ah, I compared the four of them. We're going to drop a link to that video in the show notes as well. Of course but we are. We're going to write that oh, down so I don't... I'm going to send you a, a little link right there in the, Thank you. the chat there you go Dankeschön, as they say in Norway they do yeah uh, yeah let's hope hey there's an AM 2022 two we can actually get there at three we would be able to for example to try out this pedal that would be awesome out of I, if do you there, know if, but yeah I was gonna say do you know if Paul Cochran even goes to Nam because I've never seen a Timmy stand Absolutely or anything not, like yeah. that. I don't know if he even does. I mean, he probably just sort of shows up on his own, but doesn't have a booze or anything like that. But yeah, I mean, if this yeah. is out by then, we'll we'll find some way to try it. Do you have a price yeah. in the article? Uh, I do not. not th yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to guess it's quite reasonable because in the USA. The actual Timmies that he makes, which are the single switch, you know, the iconic drive pedals, they're only about mm. $130. And they're made in the USA oh. by him by hand. So they're really, really affordable. And if you live yeah. in America, it doesn't really make any sense to almost pay that much for one of the copies, you know? It makes sense to support the guy who came out with this circuit and, mm. you know, kind of ensure that he can carry on building and making a living from his craft. I think the whole yeah. idea of clones and stuff, that's another discussion for another time. But I like to support people like this. And if it will be possible yeah. for me to support Paul Cochran next year, I shall do so. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's jump to the, I don't know, the beef of the show. And we do lists. First of all, Music Radar said the 10 best new guitar amp and modeling pedals of 2021 as voted by you and i'm looking at you dear viewer am i looking at you dear listener i don't know how that works maybe i i still am and we, uh, we decided that we're going to go in the reverse order like they listed from the first to the number 10 but we are going to start from number 10 because that just makes more sense I think. It will get more exciting as it goes <clears throat> on. Yes. And number 10 so, is the Blackstar Depth 10 Distortion. <laughs> one of their new pedals, uh, which I haven't seen in yeah. person. I, I'm, I would yeah. say I was surprised to see this on the list, but 
it's important to remember that this is not just a list for pedals. This is pedals that are either full-blown amplifiers or are modelers or can be connected to record through directly. So it's yes. a bit more than just a pedal. So, yeah, so interesting choice. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And I, th- I feel like uh, we, th- it was probably quite tricky for them to find 10 pedals in this category, so I'm not surprised to see at least one of the black stars in it. And there's probably going to be another yeah, at some the, point, isn't there? <clears throat> yeah. And it's uh, like they're also listing the... Well, no, it's that just the depth 10 distortion, so it's the red one here in the picture. Uh, again, I have absolutely no idea how it sounds or anything like that, but we did talk about it briefly in last week's show when we checked out the Christmas shopping list. <clears throat> oh, boys, please hold it together until the end of the show. Uh, yeah, but you can use it as an auto interface as well, which is kind of cool. So that is cool. Yeah, I'm gonna go with why not? <laughs> yeah, uh, why not yeah. indeed? Mm. Uh, number nine, orange acoustic pedal, and I probably just called acoustic pedal. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, basically it's a gear box. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Again, I would say I'm surprised to see this on the list, but there's probably not that many pedals in this category, so it has to go on the list. It's just weird to yep. see an acoustic pedal thing in there, but yeah, I mean, a lot of acoustic players go without an amp and they'll just run through some kind of a preamp pedal on the floor and go straight into the PA, and that's exactly what this box does, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically like a DI box with some additional things. Uh, it features uh, Orange's uh, TC preamp and Crush Acoustic uh, 30 amps. Uh, yeah. The Orange Acoustic Pedal has low noise JFET circuit for all in one pedal sized acoustic amplifier, complete with effects loop as well. Sure. I, I might have missed this release completely this year. I don't remember. I seeing also this did. Anywhere. Do you think it came out recently? Or do you think it came out earlier in the year and we've just not seen mm. it? Because I've I've never well, heard of I, this one either, I have to admit. Me neither. Uh they are saying that. Uh, best like these are the best modeling and amp pedals in the world right now, but actually it doesn't mean that they would have had been like oh, like they haven't been released this year. Might like, we talk about this in some other lists as well? Uh, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I've just googled it. It costs about 150 euros here in Europe, and it's mm. been out since the summer at least. So it's just something we must have missed. We have just missed it then. That, that's actually a very reasonable price. It's like a price of a decent DI box. So, And yep. this does the same plus that some extra stuff. Nice. You actually got me interested. <laughs> Especially because I'm about to play a geek with an acoustic guitar next week. Mm-hmm. So. Nice. Uh, number eight is the Electro Harmonics 15 Watt Howitzer. Love the name, love the graphics. Uh, apparently, it's it's like a pedal that can basically run a speaker with a Class D power amp. Nice. And has an effect slope. So that's like a, literally like an amp in a pedal size. With an yeah, effect slope. The, the, there's a few companies that make these. <clears throat> I wonder how loud you can get with the 15 watts of Class D power. But, yeah, probably not crazy loud, but... I mean, as they say, the most portable backup rig ever? It could be. Question. Which is a very uncatchy <laughs> slogan to put on merchandise. Hence why we don't have <laughs> it. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's but, a bit more optimistic than ours, but... Yeah, exactly. But this looks like a decent pedal. I've never tried any of the... Electro Harmonics mini amps because they have a couple of other ones as well. Yeah, I've forgotten the names off the top of my head, but they have a 22 watt one, etc. And there's other companies who do these in, in pedal form. And yeah, it's, I guess, if you want to have a, a thing to stick in your gig bag or whatever, just in case your amp <laughs> goes down, then why not? Why not is the perfect answer to this question. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, number seven, Blackstar Depth. 
10 dual drive. Wait. Oh. What? This It's the second one for the series. They definitely run out of things to put Yeah, they definitely run out of things to put on the list because they're putting the whole pedal range on the list and then they're separately putting this black star drive there as well. <laughs> Come on. The, just do a list of 9 then instead. Oh, I don't know. This yeah, feels fun to me. I would have to agree. And again, we need to try these Black Star Dual Drive pedals. This yeah. is Department Ten. It's it's come out and it's just it's been a time of the year where it's not really that comfortable to go into a music shop in Germany right now. Mm. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I haven't had the chance to test one. Same here. And um, yeah, let's jump to number six right away. And that's Walrus ACS1 Amp Plus Cap Simulator. I think this was featured on the Reverb top selling list as well. I think we checked out. Yeah, weeks it ago. was. Seems to be doing really well. It is a really cool thing. Yeah. This is their take kind of a competitor for the Strymon Iridium, for example. Mm. Yeah. And it's yeah, like, literally a, a modeling version of a, you know, you've got a preamp in there, you've got everything for the power amp, you've got IRs. It's it's a rig in pedal form. Yep. I've used one very briefly at 42 Gear Street, the event in the summer that I went to, and it, it sounds really good. Yeah. Nice. So many cool options available for pedal boards nowadays. But this is the first uh, one in the list so far that feels like a proper thing that should be in the list. <laughs> uh, the Wolves Audio one, not, not the number five, right? Yeah. yeah. The number five also number five, feels proper. but Yeah, number five definitely also feels proper because number five is the Victory V for the Kraken, which is basically the preamp section of Rabia's signature amplifier, the Kraken. So... Yeah, that thing is le legit if you want to use such an expression. It's basically, it's, from what I said, it's pretty much the preamp from that amp. And then you can just power, pair it with a power amp. And you got the sound. Ah, uh, so, so is this not a fully fledged amplifier? You need to pair it with a power amp too? Uh, actually, like, uh, I need to check. Just checking the article to say that for the NX enthusiast, there's a valve driven preamp, a class D solid state power amp. Oh, there you go. So there's that. Ah, uh, uh, I forgot. It comes with built in two nodes technology in it. That's actually that, super good. I forgot. That's pretty cool. It's got everything. Yeah. That's. I'm surprised that not more people seem to be playing this thing because the, the original Kraken, when it came out, everyone was loving it. But the the Victory pedal amps, the, I don't see as many of them around, let's put it that way. Again, maybe that because makes... they were released during a pandemic and because people just can't yeah. play gigs right now. But this looks, I'm in actually... theory, very, very cool. Yeah. I'm all of a sudden very interested in this one or the Duchess version, which I think also comes with two note stuff. Do you know the uh, pricing on these? Uh, uh, I don't, but I, it won't take me long to open up a Kraken. Did I misspell it or <laughs> just kidding? I'm just getting Pirates of the Caribbean stuff. Uh, did they stop? Uh, I think oh. it looks like Victory are not on the Andertons. Oh, the Andertons? Oh, Why did I even say Andertons? It looks like Victory are not on the Tobin store. I'm sure they're on the Andertons store. Yeah, let's check that out. Weird. They used to be on Tobin. There you go, though. That's funny how how intrinsically linked victory is to anderton's and it just made yeah. me think of that even though we were looking at the Toman site at the time uh, 
Ah, so, so the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have two different versions. So there's the Kraken, just the preamp pedal. And then mm-hmm. there's one that we're looking at, which also has like the power amp section in it. This okay. is something I didn't know, actually. So and what's the there. pricing difference between the two? A lot. Uh, three, £379 pounds for the preamp and 799 with the power amp and two notes technology. Oof. That's a big jump in price. That's a for, for a huge. class D solid state power amp and the two notes stuff. Yeah. But I mean, you know, you presumably get what you pay for, but that's a big jump. That's a big jump indeed. Yeah, just Are you still as interested price. as you were before you saw the price? Uh, yeah, I'm less interested now. Especially <laughs> like if uh, with the whole effing Brexit thing, like getting anything from UK, from UK has become way more expensive right away. So. And another really interesting question for me is, since when have Victory Amps not been on Toman? Or were they never on yeah. Toman? I always remember like seeing them on Toman. Yeah, I think so too. So at some point they've, they've disappeared from Toman. They've stopped stocking them. So it seems. Well, that sucks. All right, but I mean, I approve the choice. It's more expensive than I thought it would be. But you, then again, you, if you don't need to run a cap, you can over, always get the preamp version. Uh, the funny thing is, like, the price difference is such that you could actually get just the preamp version without the power amp if you don't need to run a cap ever. And then you're going to get, like, a two notes cap M. And I think those two together would be cheaper than a fully fledged cap, uh, Kraken. Before with the yeah, power amp, that that's why I'm surprised at the the jump between the two products in terms of prices. Yeah. It doesn't seem to add up for me. But anyway, this this looks pretty cool. Something else to try yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, I approve it being on the list, though. So me too. Number four is the Fractal FM9, a product we haven't tried, but we would love to try. Let's put it that way. Yep. If there weren't enough effects in that new Harley Benton one, <laughs> you have the FM9, which will, you know, if you suffer from option paralysis, destroy your brain even more. Yes. <clears throat> I like the fact that like, even the screenshots of this product has have like a like a proper list that looks like, you know, like Windows 3.1, like MS-DOS command line type of thing. Like, yeah, that's you have what it, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> like... Uh, it probably has some sort of like startup sound that sounds like Windows 95 or something. <laughs> I, I would They're fully lean done. into that, actually. That would be super fun. If you could like specify what is the startup sound of the unit. Like put a tiny speaker in it. That would be really cool. Uh, but I mean, I'd love to try one out because apparently like a lot of people say that the amp modeling itself is like Fractal is at the top of the modeling game. Like those are the most realistic yeah. amps. Those are the modeling amps people actually record records with. And a lot of the big artists are switching to Fractal products for their live setup. A lot yes, of those I, I even who have been like, have really, really loved their amps and want to talk with their amps. Yeah, that's what I've heard as well. Uh, when it comes to effects modeling the the fm9 is the best there is on the market yep it's just that it's fairly difficult to get in eu and it's not cheap it's 2k basically yeah exactly i mean i think yeah. a, quite a few people in europe are still waiting on the previous fractal device is it the fm11 or the F11 uh, or something? Yes, that or which one came first? The was, there's an FM3 pedal, which is the previous version of this one, and then there's XFX3 that came out. Uh, apparently, this, the availability has been a bit better lately, but due just to the global like chip uh, stock shortage, like a lot of the stuff is just not available. Yeah, so we'll be waiting a long time for this one too, I think. But it justifies its position at number four. There's going to have to be three very impressive products above it, I think. Yeah, and number three is Boss GT1000 Core. 
Mm-hmm. Do you think they will ever release a version that's metal core or M core or something like that? They should do. They of should. course they should. This looks pretty metal though. It's, you know, it does. satin black. It looks cool. I've heard many great things about the GT1000. And you know, Boss mm. recently also released the IS200 as part of their 200 series. And a lot of people were saying you might as well just get the GT1000 instead. And here we see it at number three on the list. It looks great. Yep. Again, it it's does. one box that does absolutely everything. Yep. Yeah, and it works as an audio interface. You can reamp your signal through it if you want. And it makes you coffee and picks up your kids from daycare as well. Some or most of those things might or might not be true. Uh, yeah, we'd love to draw one out. That's all I'm, I can say. Uh, Do you have a price for the GT1000? Um, is there a link? I have a Thorman page over the boss. GT1000. So the core is... 611 euros available in the 15 to 19 weeks. Whoa. That's a long waiting list. Same goes for the GT1000, the big unit. It's the supply chain problems caused by the yes. pandemic. You know, again, people, people are waiting so long for stuff. Prices have gone up and Boss could also be waiting on chips just like so many other companies are. Crazy though, a 15 week delay, that's a long time. Yeah, that's three plus months. Yep. Yeah, but again, like I'm fine with this being on the list. To me, it makes sense. Even though I don't have personal experience with this, but still. I trust Boss to produce uh, effect units that are at least like decent. Yep, me too. and I also haven't played this one, but I, I know that it justifies its place on the list w- without having yeah. touched it because of, you know, the reviews that I've read and the, the sounds that I've heard. Mm. Yep. Number two is the Line 6 HX Stomp XL. No surprise here, I'm going to say. People love the HX Stomp and the XL yep. version just has more of everything in it. Did they up the... Uh, no, it is using, I'm, I'm trying to think like, uh, the smaller X, HX stomp, like some people say that it runs a lot out of DSP when you try to put a lot of effects into it, but, uh, does the HX stomp XL have a bit more processing power or is it just more foot switches basically? I'm not I'm sure, not but sure. I assume it's just more foot switches. Yeah. Because they, they wouldn't have, named have been it stomp complaining about otherwise. Yeah. 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 I mean, the stomp is super small, but if you need to really get flexible with it and switch things quickly, you need to buy an external foot switch for it. So the XL removes that problem completely. Mm. Yeah. A friend of mine uses uh, HX stomp as the core of his rig, and I think he has like one or two external foot switches with that. So because it's just. It's not enough if you want to have a bunch of different sounds and switch, be able to switch them quickly. Especially because yep. it's like you got, you got to use things like snapshots and such so there's no like gap between you switching the sounds. Yeah. And yeah, this gives you five extra, extra foot switches so it's probably exactly what people wanted. So, yeah, why it, not? Yeah, it's a case of a company listening to feedback on the previous HX stomp and doing something about mm. it. So... Well done, line six. And this is number two on the list, so there is only one item that was released this year that is better than the line six HX Stomp XL, and that is... Ta-da! It is the Quad Cortex by Neural VSP. Yay, Finland! (laughs) You're claiming that as a victory, then? Yes. Uh, Still haven't tried this out but i'm seeing a lot of people switching to uh, neural dsp quad cortex rigs so apparently it's like 
uh, based on all the reviews I've read, like it's incredibly promising. People love how it feels to play, how it sounds, but like especially effects wise, it's not there yet uh, when compared to Axe FX or Helixes, for example. But then again, those products have like five to ten years more of like developing time. So I guess it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, I remember trying this at NAM 2020, and it was like nowhere near being ready, but they had one that people could play anyway, and I was not that happy with the sounds. And since it's yeah. been released, and more and more people have been able to get one, there have been promises made by the company that this and this and this is coming, and things are starting to come out, but I think we're still waiting on the full extent of the greatness of this device. I mean, it's already yeah. amazing. It offers so much, and apparently the... um not the profiling, I forget what they call it, the modeling of amplifiers that and effects thing, yeah. you can do with this is supposed to be really, really good. So it's a great device. It's just going to be interesting, like you say, to see how it progresses over the next couple of years and if they can actually deliver on the promises that they've made. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love the user interface on this. It's easily the most like the the one I would see myself using like easily because you can like if you didn't know like on the quarto cortex every single foot switch you can also like rotate and use those as like well rotate like a traditional lob so there's like this physical tactile feeling of adjusting something in your digital system which I really really like so you're not like dragging any sliders or clicking plus or minus buttons or anything like that you can just rotate the knobs and it does the thing. So that's really cool. Yeah. Like user interface design wise, this is super cool. That's an interesting touch. I, I remember when this was fresh, this uh, Quad Cortex device, and people were saying, will those controls that you stamp on and at the same time have to twist, will they last months and years of regular usage? And I don't think I've ever heard of anyone's breaking yet. So they seem to be doing all right so far. Lots of innovation in this one, that's for sure. And I feel like yeah. it it rightfully has probably the number one place on this list. Yeah. I mean, again, this was... is a list that's been voted for by uh, readers of the um, musicradar.com. So it's just people are most hyped about this one, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, it's always yeah. funny, this kind of thing. You would assume that the vast majority of the people voting for this own a maximum of one or two of the items on this list. So it's mm. like, are you just voting for the thing that you yourself would really want to have? Or are you <laughs> voting for the item that you yourself already purchased? Or how tactical is it? But yeah, no surprises to see the Quad Cortex at the top. Interesting yeah. list though. I feel like yeah, it is. We, could have pro we probably could have survived with a top five for the uh, best new pedal amps and modelers 2021 because down towards kind of. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we're scraping the barrel slightly perhaps. But yeah, mm. th there's definitely something for everyone here from the, the metal stuff to the mini power amps in pedal format to the acoustic players. So everyone has been covered mm. with this top 10. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Interesting list, and this is not the end of the lists. Uh, we are going to jump to the next one, because uh, next we want to talk about the best, 10 best new effects for 2021, and I think this was, this was also voted by readers of musicradar.com. Am I correct? Saying Yes. That? Yes. Good. And yeah, let's just jump to number 10, MXR. FOD drive. Absolutely no idea what this is. Please forgive me. Are you familiar with this pedal? Yes. Uh, I've not played it, but I've played the MXR Dookie drive, which was a signature <laughs> Billy Joe Armstrong Green Day pedal, and the FOD. FOD is one of the songs on Dookie. This is a not Dookie pedal, and MXR are presumably making more money from this pedal. It doesn't have the nice Dookie artwork that the original had, but it sounds the same as the Dookie drive. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay, that that actually gets me interested. I love the sounds on that album. So yeah, what Billy Joe Armstrong did on that record was blend two amplifiers together to get the sound. And what you can do with the MXR Dookie pedal and the FOD pedal is blend two different drives together, pretty much. 
Smart. So it's kind of unique in a way. So it's a pretty cool pedal. I tried yeah. the original at NAMM 2020 when it still, I don't think, had been released. And I've never seen one in person since then. There's not many MXR dealers around near me. But I'd like to try this one too. I really like MXR yeah. stuff. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised that this was one of the pedals that's been voted by readers on this list. But I guess people like it. And also, well, I, mean, like, I don't know. Green Day is a huge band. I also that feel that this is quite a niche pedal to appear on a top 10 list. But yeah, let's see what appears in numbers nine to one and we might change our minds. You never know. Yeah. Uh, number nine is Walrus Audio Polychrome. And see, there you go. A I remember seeing pedal. a demo of this. Yeah, a flanger pedal. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, I remember seeing a demo on Irix channel. For example, it's a great sounding pedal. I'm. I really personally like just don't know how to use flanges, but he made it sound really cool. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of YouTubers over the years, and I've heard discussions about what you guys think is the easiest and the most difficult stuff to do demos of. And when it comes to being mm. easy, you know, there's overdrives and guitars or whatever, but the most difficult thing for most of you guys to demo <laughs> seems to be flangers and phaser pedals because you just don't really know what to do with them because they're so niche. Yeah. True. I love the graphics on that pedal. Like that chameleon type of thing. So. It looks nice. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very, very retro. And the flanger is a retro effect, isn't it? There are some more modern bands who've started using phasers and flanges. Um, mm. But it, I still see it personally as being like a, a very retro effect. The, the most obvious player yeah. for me when I think of flanger is actually Dan from that pedal show. <laughs> but there, yeah. yeah, there are more modern bands like Tame Impala who are really bringing these effects back, but also making really retro influence music with them. So I don't know. I would find them really mm. hard to demo too, let's put it that way. Yeah. And speaking of flanges, I just quickly check this second, the number seven pedal. Wait, ah, so there's like a, I think there's like a tight seventh place because we went from nine to seven right away. So I'm guessing like seven, yep. seventh place is tied. And number seven, part B, let's call it that way. Is this Ryman Zelza multi-dimensional phaser? So from flanger to phaser. <laughs> uh, we actually talked about this pedal when it came out. Like, uh, who is it for? And we talked about our struggles with phasers and flanges. Like, I love the sounds, but I personally like I've owned few phaser and flanger pedals, but they never like stuck with me because I honestly just didn't know how to use them. And same goes with this one, I guess. Yeah, and that's a that's a phaser pedal with so many different phaser sounds that you wouldn't know how to use. It's it's very yeah. much overkill if you're not a mega phaser fanboy. Mega phaser fanboy. Yeah, I mean, I understand why it's on the list though. So, and yeah, seven A or seven B. Depending on whether you prefer the the Strymon or the Beatronix Vespa uh, octave stinger, so that's like an octave fuzz, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Why not? Again, one of those things that I don't really know how to use an octave fuzz, but I'd still be more comfortable with that one than a phaser or flange. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, me too, probably. And yeah, we've got Rabir on the thumbnail of the video there. He's the one who I associate a lot with with Octave Fuzz as a, as a more modern player. He he makes it sound great, yeah. so I'll be watching that video later. Again, for me personally, yeah. I think Octave Fuzz is not something I use that much. I'm a big fan of Garage Rock, so I like Octaves and I like Fuzzes too, but together it's, it's sometimes kind of hard for me. Mm. I, I love the phrase, I love Octaves gonna use that one like randomly out of context that is a good phrase yes just want to hear something but higher or lower <laughs> and number six walrus audio Mako series r1 high fidelity stereo reverb 
I think I've seen a demo of this and it's a great reverb pedal. It is. What more can you say? It's single stomp box sized, but it packs so much into it. It's enclosure. I did a video mm. on this pedal with Lee Fuge at 42 Gear Street, oh. where we tried to find a rig that could basically cover any sound you could ever want. And we basically only really used spring reverb most of the time, but with this pedal, you can do everything and it, it all sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah, nice. Uh, remind me to drop a link to that video as well in the show notes. If people want to check okay. it out. So, yeah. Can you actually do it right now because before I forget to remind you? Okay. And uh, me, while you do that, I can jump to number five on the list. Uh, Dunlop Crybaby Custom Badass Dual in Inductor Edition. Wah. Wow. So many words, but it's a war pedal that... What's different about this one, then? Uh, it's... What? It's some sort of limited edition. So there's like two different war circuits built in. And what else? Yeah. I guess people want different kind of war pedals. In, in one wah pedal. Ah, it has, the, it has the Fasl and Halo inductor modes. So it basically gives you two different styles of wah sounds, effectively. Yeah. It's something for wah enthusiasts, for sure. I mean, if you want, if you love the different sounds that you can get from those two different sorts of wah pedals, then this is for you. But if you're just looking mm. for your first wah pedal, you, you wouldn't need to get this one. I mean, if you wanted to, it would probably be great. Again, Wah is a pedal that I've never really got that much good use out of. I think probably because I'm also not that much of a lead player, but mm. there you go. I think most of the bands that I listen to also don't really tend to use Wah pedals much. What about you, Vlad? I don't think I've ever heard you doing too much with a Wah pedal. Uh, there might be a few videos on my channel where I do use a Wah pedal, but... I mean, it's one of those things that it would be nice to have a war pedal for like every uh, 20th recording session I have. <laughs> but because of the limited space, like I just, like even just individual pedal, it's like I'm running out of space all the time. So the few war pedals I've have had, like they, I've had to move on from them. At some point, I'd love to have one because as I mentioned, there are some situations where it would be fun to have a war pedal for like lead stuff. I'm not like a lead player as much as I think of myself as a rhythm guitar player, but it would be nice to have like a war pedal every now and then. Yeah. It's fun. And interesting to see this on the list, by the way. Like again, if this is voted voted by readers. And number Four, three, tied. This is again like a tie between two different parallel ranges, actually. But number three, tied, is the Universal Audio UAFX series pedals, and it's three pedals. It's kind of interesting that they're that's just not fair. Three, all three. Yeah, that's not <laughs> fair. Putting a whole series as one thing. Remember the yeah. last list that we looked at? There were two black stars from the same series as separate numbers in the list and now we have three universal audio pedals as one here yeah uh, but yeah the, fair, these but look like great pedals yeah but they sound really good so why not i like the design very retro but that that's kind of the universal audio vibe anyway so yeah again why not why not? If you've got the money, I think the three of them would set you back over a thousand euros. So that's that, you know that's these are not well. cheap pedals, but they but they sound great from what I've yeah, heard online. I've, all, not, I've not seen them in person. It's the same with mo a lot of these lists. I feel it's almost like a you know like a wish list type of thing. Like people vote for the things they would love to have. Because I don't think all of the people who voted own these pedals. No, and I mean, I mean, I don't think it's like, it should be a criteria for you to be able to vote. Like, you need to own the pedal so you can vote for it. But still, interesting. Uh, 
what's also interesting, like the universal audio pedals were tied with Boss HM2W. <laughs> Heavy metal was a craft distortion pedal. <laughs> Yeah, from one end of the market to the other. And yeah. you can guarantee that they've appeared at number three together, but way, way more people own the HM2W. Yes. Heavy metal was a craft distortion pedal. Yeah. I want to Looks have like one. a great just pedal. Because you need to get one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just... It's a classic, and being from the Scandinavia, it's like, it's almost mandatory for me to own one. If you're a guitar player in Scandinavia, you need to like almost legally uh, like bonded to get one. Yeah. It's a Swedish death metal sound. And there's only one setting you can use with this pedal anyway, so and I always see the thumbnail from all of it, so it's Swedish approved or like Sweden approved <laughs> like thing on the back as well. Yes, I totally agree. Nice. And number two. And this is interesting. Boss RC5 Loop Station, the compact size looper by Boss. Uh, by the way, I think the like the video here and the pedal here, the image and the video are from a, about a different pedal. They put a pedal yep. of RC1 instead. Yep. <laughs> so is it the yeah the RC5 is the one on the list? Yeah, yeah so it has RC1 like a mini display and everything. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm not familiar. Yeah, go ahead. Carry on. Carry on my way. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, looks great, uh, especially like with the small display and everything. I love small looper pedals that can do a lot, even though it would take me 700 years to learn how to use them. But I just love the idea of them, at least. And... Oh yeah, they are talking about the RC1, I guess, in the article as well, but it's just a bit confusing that the video, the pedal we're talking about is the RC5, the video is RC5, but the photo is of RC1. Mm. But yes, RC5 was the one that was voted. Uh, I got um, 99 user programmable slots, uh, loop engine that you can record 13 hours of your playing on it. 57 different drum grooves and and boss also gives you a b variations of each groove so you can create pretty complex stuff with this and you can even use it uh, with midi and synchronize it with your daw or drum machine <laughs> and you can back up your loops via usb uh, that's pretty and you can well get them in like high quality yeah and you can have, like, yeah, you can get those loops via in like a wave format as well. So nice. So and I have another kind of question in the for article you. that number. Yeah, yeah. Carry in the on. Article that number one is the TC Electronic Ditto Plus Looper, which is a tiny Ditto, but it has a display. That's cool. That is beautiful. I have the original Ditto, and it doesn't have a display, and you can only record one loop. And I find that quite limiting a lot of the time. Yeah. So the Ditto Plus is taking it to the next level. So I need to upgrade. But my question for you, Vlad, is this. This is a list of the 10 best new effects pedals of 2021. And numbers one and two are both looper pedals. I'm not sure if I feel like they should be the top of the effects. I mean, they probably are the top selling pedals, but they're not effects pedals for me. Maybe I'm That's being pedantic. True. But I feel like... well. Uh, yeah, that's a good I don't question. know. They, they don't sit properly on the list for me. They they sit sort of slightly mm. off to the side. Yeah, I have to have to agree because like uh, they're not effects pedals in a sense. They're more like I don't know utility pedals in a sense. Uh, it's it's not like you're just like a foot switch or like a, a looper switch even. But it's not uh, it's not an effect. But. Uh, I guess I'm kind of also okay with these being here. And by the way, yeah, I, I I'm okay with it. Completely missed the missed the Ditto I'm Plus release. Yeah, I, I'm not going to be writing a strongly worded letter to Music Radar <laughs> saying I disagree with your list. But I just feel like if you're looking for a list of the top effects pedals, again, I, maybe I'm. If you come from a a perspective of someone who wants to buy a Christmas present for a guitar player in their life and they want an effects pedal, 
Mm. You wouldn't want to buy them a looper. They would ask for a looper or something separately, I believe. But yeah, yeah, the Ditto yeah. Looper, Ditto Looper, the Ditto Plus <laughs> Looper came out earlier this year, and it didn't have a massive launch. But it, yeah, it looks really cool, and it's only about 120 euros, I think. So mm. not that expensive. I'm deciding at the moment whether I should go for the Ditto Plus or whether I should go for one of the Boss alternatives or perhaps mm. something else. Because I really like the Ditto, but I, I want a few more capabilities from it. On the other hand, you, yeah. you get things like the drum loops on the Boss, and I don't know if it's going to be worth it for me to play with. Yeah. Having, having had the new X, uh, what's it called? Completely backing, up, backing out right now. New X uh, JTC something drum drum basically like a looper and a drum machine in one. Uh, those drum things do add to the overall experience, right? A lot. It's it was so much fun to jam, jam like you get a put on a, like a drum loop, then you record like a rhythm guitar check, and then you can even add like fills to your jam and stuff like that. It definitely adds to the experience. At least, like, I love that personally. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, and the, the other cool thing about having drum loops on a looper is that you can practice with a metronome, effectively, and get yourself yeah. in time better. And that's also practical when making, you know, complex loops, because sometimes getting a loop in time is very difficult. And if you've got a drum loop to play with, you know that that's always going to be perfectly in time. So that makes your job a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah, my... Uh, rhythm is a bit uneven when I don't have any kind of click going on, but with a loop I can actually play properly in time. Yeah, which I guess is more Im important than being able to stay perfectly in time by yourself. But that's a different discussion for a different day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, fun list, and this is not the end of the lists because we want to jump to something way, way more pricey. Gear of the Year, best premium electric guitar of 2021, barguitar.com. And I don't think they give us criteria how these were decided, but these are not voted by the readers, I believe. So it's by the staff or something like that. And the winner, Macmull Stinger, which is their take on uh, jazz master type guitar, I guess. And congrats to our friends from Macmull. I'm really happy for you guys. This is really awesome. Yep, that's and amazing. To, to be voted the best premium electric guitar of the year, well, that's a great success for them. I really like the Macmull stuff that I've played. It's, it's way high-end for someone of my capabilities yeah. or needs, but amazing amazing instruments so congratulations to them too i mean we both we know the guys behind the company and we've we, we've sort of watched it grow i guess you know yeah they were at were they at the original GitCon? if yes. not they were at one of the second or third events and they've been a, a fixture since then you know people like henning and harry and a guitar have used their guitars extensively and and more and more people seem to be buying them and you can now get them at places like toman too so Mac Mull mm -hmm. has been a modern success story. They're doing really, really well. And their Instagram page regularly has guitars that I would really want to remortgage my apartment for, but I never will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, honestly, I, like, I would probably have a bit of trouble trying to decide which one to get. Maybe I'd still go for the Tele type of guitar. But like, yeah. I don't know what they're doing with those guitars, but... Like you think, like you know how a Telecaster sounds, and then when, when you pick up a Macmull, it's a whole different experience. It not only it sounds different, but it feels completely different. They're doing some magic wizardry type of thing with those guitars. Yeah, I mean, for the money, that's something that you should get. But still, like it's one of my like bucket list items. One day, I'd like to own a Macmull guitar. Actually, like I. Now that I think of, of it, I would probably rather have a Mac Mall built to my specs than use the same money and get like a vintage guitar instead. 
which might be a controversial t- take, but let's say I have 6,000 euros to spend on a, on a guitar, I'd probably go w- for a Mac Mall instead of like trying to search for an old deli or something. Wait, so Mac Malls cost about 6,000 do they right depends, now? Depends. Really depends on what you're getting, but they oh, are yeah, not. That's a lot of money. Cheap. Actually, let's check out Tolman quickly since we have. Looks like there's one guitar available, and that costs four oh. and a half thousand euros. An S Classic. Yeah, four thousand five hundred. That's that's still an awful lot of money. I mean, you're in Fender yeah. Custom Shop, you're in Gibson Custom. You can basically get anything for that price. Yep. So yeah, it's one of those bucket list things. In terms of picking a Mac Mull or a modern custom shop instrument over a genuine vintage guitar, yeah, I mean, I understand why people would do it. And if you were trying to find a magic old Telecaster, for example, it might be really hard to do that for 6000 these days, yeah. you know, knowing the prices that vintage guitars have gone up to at the moment. And, you know, with a Mac Mull, you're getting this modern thing, which is going to give you that vintage feel and sensibility and vibe but also that modern playability at the same time so yeah it, it's a tough choice but i totally understand why you would make that choice yep yeah. i don't know there's just something about those guitars like having played several mcmalls yeah it just surprised Surprises me every time. Like you think, okay, this is going to like roughly feel and sound a certain way, and they just sound old, which is interesting. Like, yeah, and apparently they sp- cost like they custom build each set of pickups for each guitar. They, I think they mentioned like they do some sort of like body resonance measurements. Pair that with like the magnets they choose for the guitars and stuff like that, and like. Each guitar is personalized that way as well. Very cool. Maybe that's where the magic is. Who knows? Could be. Could be. Yeah. So uh, Mac Mull was the winner. What else was nominated in this category? Gibson Murphy Lab 1959 Les Paul Standard. Something that we actually featured on the show some weeks ago. And there was yep. a pretty in-depth review on guitar.com on these guitars and uh, this is interesting because I think in the review they mentioned that the fi- like aging on these guitars was a bit weird. Or was it on the other models more than on the Les Paul? Was it on the 335 or something? I think it was on all of them. The, the aging was a yeah. bit weird. And I read on some different forums that on the Les Pauls too, it looks, you know, just not how it should look, especially for the prices that you pay for these guitars, which is considerably yeah. more than a Mac Mull. That's true. That that that's what makes what makes this interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a quick side note: I'm really waiting for MacMal to come up with a Les Paul type design. That should be interesting. I have a feeling they have something in the making. I have no like, actual cool. information, but I'm just guessing. <laughs> But yeah, this Gibson one is an interesting one because, as we mentioned, like the article wasn't all praise. And I think they were like even questioning whether you should get one right now because it, the whole Murphy Lab is apparently like in early stages. Yeah, and they were so. saying that in a couple of years they'll probably be better than they are now, effectively. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's actually interesting because of that to see this guitar nominated for the mm. the best premium guitar of the year. But... I guess it's Gibson, so you've got to stick them in somewhere. Yeah. Uh, next one, uh, these nominees are un- numbered, by the way. Eastman Romero LA. Uh, that's a more niche guitar right away. Absolutely, yeah. Even more niche than like a McMull. It's an interesting looking thing. Hollow body. I don't know what it reminds me of. It kind of, the body shape reminds me a bit of a Rickenbacker. Yeah. That's true. Crossed with a 335. Then it's got like a weird... What is that? It's not a Bigsby, is it? It's some mm. unique sort of whammy uh, there. That's the... I'm trying to... I'm trying to remember, that, that's probably like a Duesenberg bridge. 
Actually, my uh, upcoming yeah. jazz master that I I'm yet to finish. I think it has that type of bridge on it as well. Okay, I think the only thing that could have been improved there would be if they'd put a virtual Jeff on instead. <laughs> That's the thing that is missing. Virtual Jeff. Is it would have been the yeah. winner if that was the case. Yeah, that's true. What a missed opportunity. Uh, then there's Trent Model 1. This kind of very Jazz Master style. Shape. Yeah, it looks, like a, it looks like a Jazz Master that someone created on Minecraft. Like a more kind of <laughs> straight-cornered <laughs> art house, true. Bauhaus take on a Jazz Master or something. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it looks nice. I, I like that design. We don't actually see the headstock on this photo, but you probably like if we check out would check out the article, we get, would probably. I'm gonna have to see look it. at that. Yeah, looks nice. Uh, then the next nominee is the Ernie Ball Music Man Saint Vincent Goldie. By the way, I'm just realizing they're missing the prices for all of these. That would kind of add to this list. Like what? Because I don't think the Music Man St. Vincent is nearly as expensive as the Macmull, for example. I think it's pretty expensive. I think you might be surprised. Uh -huh. I'm going to Google it. Yeah. I mean, I'm a bit surprised to see this on the list, but then again, I have played a few St. Vincents, and they are good. That's a really comfortable guitar to play. I love, love the neck shape. So, yes, it's a, it's a yeah. unique neck shape, isn't it? It's quite different, but it's mm. very, very cool. Um, for, for me personally, I guess my budget range would more be Sterling by Music Man, and that has a much more generic neck shape, but I love these mm. St. Vincent guitars. They're so unique. Okay, so the street yeah. price is $3,000. So, okay, you're right. It is cheap mm. compared to the other guitars on this list. That's still a lot of money, isn't it? But It is, but... I I guess it still feel, like falls into the premium category. I'm yeah. fine with that. Yeah, yeah. Let's roll that one. Uh, the next nominee is Iverson Dakota. It's kind of mm -hmm. Les Paul Junior type of thing. Looks yeah, very nice. vintage looking burst. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, very simple. Are they mini humbuckers on that? Yeah, they, they actually say mentioned here in the article that. Uh, looking for fiber stylings in a less intimidating form factor. <laughs> it does look like that, actually. Like, yeah. very fire-birdy style design. Yeah, why not? Very simple. Three controls, two humbuckers, mini humbuckers. Just a wraparound bridge. Very yep. nice. Uh, then the next nominee is Gretsch uh, G6129T89, a vintage select 90 or oh, 89 Sparkle Jet. Why do they have 89 twice in the name of the guitar? Just asking questions. Yeah. Because that, that makes it twice as good. No, I don't know. Yeah, could be. <laughs> but yeah, that, be. That, that, that is a beautiful take on the Gretsch line, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Very bling. And I bet it sounds amazing as well. Yep. Sure, why not? Uh, Harmony Comet is the next one. This kind of 335-ish design. A bit more unique shape. Yeah. Uh, I played some of the Harmony guitars, including a Comet at the 42 Gear Street event, and they're very cool. There you go. Yep. I'm not sure if they're kind of exactly in the right place being on this list, because again, I think they fall into a cheaper price point than all of the oh, other guitars yeah. on the list, but still, they're, they're very fun instruments. I, I really enjoyed the ones that I played, and I would like to get some onto my channel at some point, but that's going to take a while, I think. Nice. Yeah, I'm fine with it being on the list. Uh, then... There's the Fender American Professional 2 Telecaster Deluxe. Is this a premium guitar, like price-wise? Well, close to 2,000 euros, I guess. I think that's a similar yeah. price to the 
to the harmony that we just had before. So these are yeah. the more affordable guitars and the premium line. But yeah, I mean, that's how it's been positioned in the Fender product portfolio anyway. The Pro 2 is yeah. seen as a premium electric. So let's put it there. This looks like a great instrument. I've never played one, but yeah, they look cool. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's borderline premium or just like professional level, but uh, I'm okay with that one. Then there's the Epiphone USA Collection Casino. Uh, I'd love to know what the price on this one is. They're proper expensive. I think they're about two and a half thousand dollars, but just Google it. This is a beautiful looking instrument, possibly my favorite on the list. It, it looks amazing. But um, again, very, very hard to find and try. And you seeing any prices? Not uh, USA to this one. Uh, not sure. Click okay. on that review down there. Yes. Ah, this is from the same this site, the so there you go. The... Yeah. But yeah, I love I the vibe the of these casinos. Yeah, and I mean... the, the Made in the USA Epiphone ones look great. Is there a mention of the price? Come on. Ah, 2,400, okay, yeah, yeah, so... Pounds... That's a premium price. That's probably going to be three thousand euros in price. comparison. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, okay, I have no complaints about that one. Then, yeah, I love price, that guitar. But uh, my question for you would be: Would you feel comfortable paying that much money for an Epiphone when you could buy a Gibson for the same price? Well, I know the they're both made like in the USA. It's just a question of you know the brand image. I'd be fine with that. If like this was the guitar I really wanted, because I would also know that the Epiphone wasn't always like the budget. Like it didn't mean that it's a budget friendly instrument. Yeah. So yeah, why not? Uh then there's also Revolta Regatta Seven. I had to remind myself how the Roman numerals work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looks nice. Revolta guitars also look great to me. I've seen a bunch of them pop out on different channels. So Yeah, me too. I've never seen one in person again, but I've seen quite a few of them that look lovely. They're very much retro-influenced. I think yeah, the it's funny RJ Ronquillo who's got great demos yeah. of one. Yeah, interestingly enough, like this has 24 frets, which is kind of cool, I guess. Different from others. The same price and like design and design range. Yeah, why not? Seems to be my answer for a lot of things, but I like this too. <laughs> Me as well. I wonder why it has twenty four frets. Yeah, I like. That's a good question. I don't think people buying this type of guitars kind of usually want to have 24 frets. <laughs> That's what I what was thinking, I yeah. Yeah, no, no, I was thinking exactly the same thing. People going for guitars like this are not really going to be shredding up there and needing that second octave, are they? But yeah, you never know. The, the other thing that comes to my mind is the fact that I know that Revolta make a few baritone models. So, you know, having different scale lengths, longer necks, or different numbers of frets. It just might be a thing that they want to have in their range to appeal to those players who want that kind of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, there you go. That's the best premium electric guitars of 2021, according to guitar.com. I think yeah, and we mostly agree, right? Yeah, as voted for by them, as opposed to the general public, I think. But just going back to the very start of that list, we've just seen what the Mac Mull Stinger has beaten. So what a huge success, yeah. again, for, for Mac Mull to win yeah. that. Very, very Absolutely. cool. Yep. So I'm really happy for the Mac Mull guys. Well-deserved, well-earned, one of those things. Yep. Yeah. And... From guitars to 
albums to things that uh, you create with those guitars, albums. <laughs> Very smooth transition, oh, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, uh, I'm going to talk about an album that has been super, super influential, especially in my teens. Yeah, Albums of Our Lives, next. Like plastic on a CD shelf, these are the albums of our lives. I am annoyingly modern with my choices in the sense that I have, I don't have physical copies on many, many of these albums. I actually, do you think I have a physical copy of this album somewhere, but I was just unable to find it for this episode? And we are talking about Reckoning Night by Sonata Arctica, which is a Finnish power metal band that absolutely blew my mind when I was a kid when all of this came out. Um, I think the first time I heard of them was like maybe 2003-ish with their Winter Hearts Guild album. But Reckoning Night was the one that I remember listening through like countless and countless of times. Um, I think one of the like when I decided to go with this album, one of the things I like, immediately realized was that uh, Sonata Arctica set the bar for like the quality of power metal they kind of wrote. They set set the bar so high that I haven't really been able to find other bands in this genre that kind of do it for me the way this band did, especially back in the day. And I actually released this album this morning. Uh, just to remind myself like how, what a cool album it is and so not Arctica as I mentioned is, is a power metal band but when it, when it comes to like uh, compositions and vocal arrangements especially they are like a tier above your average power metal band you very very ra rarely hear like any kind of you know classic pop chord arrangements and stuff like that. The, uh, the compositions and songs are usually fairly complex, but they flow seamlessly from one part to another. Uh, Tony Kakko, who is the singer of the band, he he has admitted many, many times in all the in interviews that he's a gigantic Queen fan. And the amount of harm, vocal harmonies and vocal like production things they do in this band and on this album are just ridiculous. There's so many cool harmonies and he's such an amazing vocalist. Uh, it's just really cool. Like there's definitely this kind of theatrical element to all of that, all of the album as well, because there are like transitions from one song to another where there's like the speech parts and there's like all of these ambient, uh, huge choir things that Tony sings and stuff like that. And, just a super fast but amazingly written and sung and played album. And unfortunately, uh, the band's longtime uh, guitar player, Jani Liimatainen, left the band or was he kicked out because of some... I don't remember what the controversy was. I, back then, it's been at, over 10 years since he's not been in the band. Uh, he was one of the composers for the band. Like he and Tony were like the pair who wrote the songs. And I have to say the quality of the band went down after one of like those two guys were split. And Yanni has since gone and done other albums where he has shown that he's also an amazing songwriter. He's not a singer though, so he has other people sing for him. But yeah an absolute staple in the power metal genre. And I don't know, Rich, how familiar you are with power metal and stuff like that, but I think this might be an album that you would actually enjoy just because of all of the uh, composition and like just the vocal things that are happening here. If you, if you like Queen, you will probably at least enjoy this album because it's just... Yeah, it's combined all the things that I love. Fast metal guitar playing, amazing singing, shred solos, but also this this epicness that comes from all of the 
production and especially all of the vocals. Yeah, I was going to say power metal is not something I'm very familiar with, but if there's a big Queen influence on it, I'll give it a try. Why not? I, I've never heard of the band at all, so it would be something totally new for me to to have a listen to this weekend. Yeah, they they were huge uh, in the early 2000s, especially. They were like one of those bands that broke into like uh, they were huge in Japan as well. They might still be huge in Japan, but that was the, like in the early 2000s, like a European metal band started to like become big in Japan. Stone of the Arctic was one night, which was one. There were, I guess, a few other bands as well. And uh, in very early, like YouTube and just internet video days, there were some <laughs> interviews by the with these guys uh, on some like Japanese shows and they are kind of fun to watch because well er everybody speaks great English nowadays but back like in the early 2000s it was still fairly uncommon for a Finnish artists to be able to speak like proper English on interviews and like when you got Japanese people interviewing uh, Finnish people in English those were some fun interviews to watch just saying <laughs> Uh, it was like, you know, I'm assuming you know who Kimi Raikkonen is, the F1 driver, like at this point. Yes, roughly. of course. He's, yeah. Yes, he's very famous for his like one-liners. Those whole interviews were basically like one-liners. And definitely, like they've really improved since then. I think Trey had the band, like a few years ago, Trey interviewed the whole band when they were touring US and it's completely different now. They have they were a great interview and like a super fun listen. But yeah. This man was such a huge part of my childhood, teenage years, and I still can play like them, but I really appreciate the craft and I <laughs> forgot how much I love the band by listening to this out like when I was listening to this album. Okay, I'm gonna give it a try on the weekend. I never thought I would be spending this weekend listening to power metal, but there we go. <laughs> These things can happen. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I really don't know, like, it's, I'm trying to think of, like, what to say about this album more than, it just, perfect timing paired, like, I mean, it's cool to have, like, not all of the music that I listened to as a, like, and that I loved as a teenager is something that I would listen to now. But it's cool to listen to some of these and like figure out like, okay, this is still really, really well composed and played and all of that. Uh, the, the one thing that on this album isn't that good is the mix for whatever reason. It's a bit muddy, okay. but otherwise uh, it's, it's really high quality. And I'm super happy that I was influenced by bands like this because they don't go the easy route and write some simple riffs and simple chords and uh, you know just simple vocal melodies and kind of roll with that this is more complex stuff and I I think that has influenced me a lot there's almost like a musical uh, you know like musical uh, musical element not like music but you know the theater musical type of element in what they do and I love the drama so yes I like this album as well because of that. Very cool. Another great choice. We've had so many different wide-ranging choices of our albums already, so it's pretty cool. We ought to do a list of them somewhere where people can check them out. Yeah, maybe I need to throw together all the album picks as like one special podcast for the Christmas season. Like if you've had enough turkey or ham, in my case, because in Finland we don't eat turkey, we eat ham. Like when you've had your Christmas meal or holiday meal, or like fast, it means like several days of eating a lot, and then <laughs> resting, trying to rest after you've had those meals, like listening to a podcast about music might be exactly the thing to do. Yeah, and definitely. And yeah, I'm, I think I'll throw all of the albums of our lives as a separate like holiday special podcast together and just bombard you with cool episodes during that time because we'll probably be taking a couple of weeks off doing the cat pick fridays before we come back early next year 
But yeah, I like the idea. And yeah, Stone Antarctica, Reckoning Night, fantastic album. Even if you're not generally a fan of power metal, check out a couple songs, like maybe the one they start with, so Misplaced, and maybe, I think Don't Say a Word is a fun one as well. So yeah, give those a listen. And yeah, before we wrap up this week's show, let's talk about something that we definitely think you should watch this weekend. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Video. It's not like you have anything else to do. This week's Weekend Watch comes from Thoman. Uh, is the guitar and bassist channel. Yes, because they have multiple channels. And it's called Top 5 ABBA Bass Lines. And this video reminded me about how amazing ABBA was and is. Because they apparently just released a new album that I haven't listened to. And according to reviews, it's not that amazing. But never mind that. Uh, we listened to a lot of ABBA at my home back in the day. And it's like, what, what was the creme de la creme of pop music? Yeah, exactly. The Yay, creme de la creme. I know the new thing. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, they, they are like the elites of pop music. Were they like... I think it's one of the, it's like, you need to know the Beatles, I'd say, and you definitely should know ABBA as well, if you ever want to write anything that people will want to sing, like people will sing to, or anything like that, like, get to know those two bands, and you're set for life. They had so many amazing hits, and they have so many amazing bass lines, which is kind of cool. You don't really think of ABBA and like, go, oh yeah, the they had the funky bass lines, but Julia does an amazing job demonstrating those bass lines and made me want to pick up my Sterling bass and play some bass guitar. Yeah, I'm trying to pick out what the bass line is by just watching <laughs> what Julia is <laughs> playing without sound right. at the moment, but I, but I can't do it. I don't know ABBA enough for that. Yeah, me, me neither, like, and it's like, when I was listening to ABBA as a kid, I wasn't at the stage where like, oh yeah, that's a cool bass line. She must be playing like a five string, like Music Man bass or something like that. Uh, I wasn't there yet at the time. But yeah, it's a fun watch. Highly, highly recommended. And as I mentioned, yep. there's some really cool bass lines in the ABBA songs. But that wraps up. Can't pick Friday's episode number 40. And I think next week we're still doing a normal show. After that, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure when we're having our like, Christmas break type of thing. But we'll keep you informed. But next week we should be back. I think. You're nodding, so that's... Uh, yeah, most likely. I'm trying to go over it in my head, but I think next week I'm still here, so... Yep. Yeah, we can do one. Exactly. A Christmas special or something like that. Yeah, might be a Christmas special actually. So let's rest, let's roll with that one. And should we come up with our own lists? We've been reading other people's lists. Should we come up with our own lists that we go through <laughs> during the next show? We Just think saying. about that. The, the the top ten cat pick Friday episodes of twenty twenty one. I was thinking of something more. Um, of like our craziest uh, music related gi like gift ideas or something like that but we, we can go with that, that could work <laughs> yeah let's come up with an yeah. idea what about the what about the top 10 best music lists we could do a list of lists <laughs> and go full on cat pick friday's inception i would like that yeah we go like full meta on that one <laughs> our top 10 list our top 10 top 10 lists it's a good idea, but also yeah, a stupid yeah. one. So we probably shouldn't yes. do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, probably five people would be super excited. Everyone else would probably watch something else. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll come up with something. Don't you worry. So just keep an eye on Catpick Studio social media, and we will let you know what's going on. And yeah, 
Thank you so much for watching, listening, liking, sharing, subscribing. Ways to support what we do in the show notes, as is everything else, as always. And yeah, have a great weekend. Thank you, Rich, for joining me once again. And bye, podcast. Bye, podcast. <laughs>